Mr. Fletcher. Um, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Is it afternoon? Good afternoon. I think it is now. Yeah. Good afternoon. The judge it's like, it keeps the clock from us. Do how long good afternoon. Thank you. Okay. Um, you and I have uh, we've talked before, have we not? Yes, sir. Right. So I just want to touch upon um, a couple of things. Okay. So first, and, and you were driving a Silverado, a, a big truck, right? Yes. And were you just driving the truck on your own, or was there were you towing anything? I was towing a trailer. Tell the jury about the trailer. The big trailer? Were you, uh, it was, it's it's a 14-foot uh, like dump trailer. I was going to drop it off to my cottage on my way to Sheboygan. You got onto I-75 at Dixie Highway, yes. right? And that feeds into the the left the left lane. Yes, it does. The fast lane. The fast lane. Yes. It's a different type of entrance than norm than we'll call normal, right? Yes, you have to navigate that entrance ramp. Right. So normally, when you turn onto the you go onto the highway, and I'll pull up a map here in a second. When normally you go onto the highway, you're you're merging into the slow lane or the right lane. Yes? Yes. So you're looking to your left. Yes? yes? This one, when you turn on, you have to almost look to your right because you, you don't want to get in the way of on fast traffic. Absolutely, true? yes. When you got onto the highway, I'm going to, you got on, you had to get up to, to traveling speed, right? Yes, and it's a short entry ramp, so. It's a short entry ramp. Yes. Comes up. Uh, you get off at Dixie, you're going 55, and you get off into you, and it's a pretty short slowdown period, and then you take a hard right-hand turn, and then it's a big, it's not a big, it's a looping left-hand circular ramp. It's actually pretty tight, and then you're in a pretty short entry on into the fast lane. It's on not a long entrance ramp no. on to, to, to actually catch... The entrance on I-75. No, right? that's why I say you have to navigate that one. Yes. Okay. At some point now, normally I presume when you're driving your Silverado pulling a large trailer like that, you would you, you would be you drive a certain speed, correct? Yes. You would drive about the speed limit, right? Correct. Which is 70 miles per hour, yes. right? Yes. On this occasion, at one point. Silverado truck pulling a this large trailer, you actually got to a speed above the speed limit, right? Yes. Well above the speed limit towing the trailer, yes. right? Um, towing this thousand pound trailer, yes. right? And you got to at one point twelve to thirteen miles over the speed limit, correct? Yes. And and at that point you you were you had made a decision yourself at that point that that was what. You, the judgment that you made was to drive ahead in your truck pulling that trailer going 12 to 13 miles over the speed limit, right? Yes. I'm not challenging you on that. I want to ask you some questions about that, okay? Okay. All right. At that point, you thought that that was the best thing for John Fletcher to do, yes. right? At that point, you, you were using your, John Fletcher's best judgment at that time, right? Yes. You had your reasons. Yes. You weren't throwing caution to the wind and saying to everybody else on the road to have with them, right? No. You weren't saying, screw everybody else, I'll drive as fast as I want with my trailer under these conditions, right? No. You weren't saying to yourself, I, I'm disregarding the safety of others for my own selfish reasons. You weren't saying that to yourself, right? No. Right. And you weren't saying, just because I'm going this fast with this trailer, you know, I don't care about anybody else's safety. That wasn't what was going through your head, was it? No, not at all. You did it based on your experiences and your own judgment, what you thought was safest at the time for John Fletcher, right? Yes. You understand that someone else could disagree, yes? Absolutely. That would be the sort of hindsight analysis 2020 people use, and they, but at the moment, in that time, at that exact moment, you were doing what you thought was best. Yes. And you know that <clears throat> those sorts of judgments are what people make on the road in real time, 
Yes? Yes. Using their own experiences. Yes. What's best for them. Yes. And just because you might disagree with it doesn't mean that they're throwing caution to the wind either. That's correct. When you saw Mr. Warren and the trailer pull into the rest area, you had a thought to yourself at that point, correct? Yes. You had choices that you could have made at that point, right? Yes. For example, had you, you could have decided that you wanted to redial 911 if you thought there was a need to do so, correct? Correct. Like, hey, this guy, someone should go investigate this guy. He looks like he's drunk or intoxicated, or you could have done that if, if that was going through your mind, right? Right. That never went through my mind. Never went through your mind. No. Because at that point, you decided there was no need to call 911 again, right? Yes. Because you could see what the person was doing, yes? Yes. They pulled into the rest area, yes? Yes. And you realized at that point, ah, that's why they didn't pull over earlier. Gonna He's going to the rescue. That's speculation. I would drive. That's what you thought to yourself. That's why he didn't pull over on the side of the road. Yeah. Because I, he's going to the rest area. I you believe, thought to yourself. I believe that my thought was exactly that, that uh, it was odd, but he was just trying to get to the rest area. Okay. Yes. Now, I know that you saw a, an object. It's very difficult to talk about this in, in the real time, isn't it? Because we know yes. now that it was a person, right? Yes. Um, at the time as you passed by Mr. Uh, this, this car and this trailer, you said that your mind, you, you say your mind thought, that looks like a body. Yes. Is it fair to say that at that point, if and I'm asking you, Mr. Fletcher, if you really thought that there was any chance that that was a body, you would have called 911 again? Yes. And what happens is, at that point, you just said, my, can't be. It's ridiculous. Can't be. That's absolutely. right? Absolutely. You don't begrudge anybody else that same sort of conclusion either, do you? No, sir. Now... I want to just cover just a couple of, of facts. If I understand correctly, when you observed, do you recall, or strike that, there were other cars between you and the vehicle and the trailer, isn't that right? No. You're absolutely certain that there were no other cars between you and the trailer? Yes. Swearing on your oath, and that's the best of your recollection? Yes. There were no other cars around the the, the the car and trade, correct? No. Okay. Is it possible, Mr. Fletcher, that when you look back at it in hindsight that it seems that way, but there really were other cars there, or are you just certain there were? No, I'm certain there were no other cars between us. Okay. You didn't see another car going back and back and forth, no. kind of around that? No. That car and trade, almost like some maybe from your perspective, kind of checking it out or backing up and going forward? No. That didn't happen? No. Now, the disc, you got on the Dixie Highway, um, I-75 entrance is at exit 93, right? Yes. And I know that you have, you thought that it was about four miles or so to get to the rest area, is that right? Yeah, three to four miles. It, the, the, is it is it your understanding? And tell me if I if you if you know this or not that the rest area is actually um, exit ninety six. I, I I'm not sure exactly which one. Now. I've had to stop there numerous times. But if, if it's exit ninety six and exit ninety three, that'd be, that'd three, be miles. three miles. That's correct. Yes. And you know this court process when we talk about things, we have a way of taking things that that happened rather quickly and really slowing them down and breaking them down to the minute, the second, yes? Yes. But if you've been a driver on the road, you know, when you're driving 60 miles an hour, for example, you're going a mile a minute, yes? Yes. And so it took you only a couple of minutes to get between Dixie Highway and the rest area. Yes. This was a relatively quick trip. Yes. <laughs> can I, just so I can pinpoint a couple of, of things, um, if I understand correctly, 
and you tell me if I'm wrong. You got onto I-75 at Dixie Highway entrance, right? Yes. Um, and you believe that the object or the car that you saw ahead was about half a mile ahead, right? Approximately, yes. I mean, you and I have talked before. We sort of try to put that in the layman's terms. That's almost nine football fields. Yes. You were going varying speeds over that period of time? Yes. But in that three miles, regardless of how fast or slow you're going, you ultimately did catch up to the vehicle, right? Yes. Just want to see if you can use some simple logic. We can agree on some simple logic, okay? Okay. If you both are traveling the same speed, you would never catch the other vehicle. That right? is correct. So, in other words, the closing speed, you've heard that phrase before? Yes. You would have to be going faster and he'd have to be going slower for you to be able to catch up. Yes. So you, you saw him about two and a half miles, or about a half mile ahead of you in that three mile stretch? Yes. And then you caught him at exit marker 96. At the, at so the rest fast area. You were, I'm sorry, I don't want to cut you off. Yeah, at the rest area. Yeah. So however fast you were going, at some point over that 2.8 or three miles or whatever, you caught him? Yes. There's a in the about a couple of minutes into this drive. So if we, if we sort of estimate it, just for it's just 60 miles an hour, take you three minutes to cover this drive. You're going a bit you're going a bit faster than that. Yes, yes. at one point considerably faster than that. Yes. If that's the case, would you agree with me uh, that you would get there is a rest area sign in the, somewhere along the way? Yes. Yes. The rest yes. area sign is one mile before the rest area, correct? Yeah, they, I would assume that. You saw the rest area sign, didn't you? Yes. And when you saw the rest area sign, that is when you said to yourself, I realize he's just trying to get to the rest area. No, I think it was a little after that when he was getting off into there. At the rest area signs when I could make out the color of what was driving, but you know, it happens very fast at that point, as you right. said. I'm just going to ask you a question, and, and we have a transcript up there for you, just so you can look at it if you want to see it. Okay. And I'm going to just ask you, previously I asked you whether, when you saw the rest area sign, is at that point you realized he's just trying to get to the rest area, and you said yes. Do you remember that question and answer? I don't exactly remember it. Uh, I remember the question, but I, I don't remember exactly the Okay. Let me see if this refreshes your mm -hmm. your memory, okay? Um, this is on page 59, and it's a lines 11 through 15. And what you said to Trooper Rule was so, and you, at that point, you would use the model markers 97 and 98. Remember that? I, I don't remember verbatim, but... Those are the wrong markers, but just, yeah. just yeah. follow along. Mm -hmm. And what you said to Trooper Rule was, so 97 and 98, between the model markers of the rest area, and I said, oh, he's just trying to get to the rest here. Do you remember that? Yes, I do remember. And the question before that was on line three, let me try to refresh your memory, okay? Question, what you said to Trooper Rule, the left side of the trail, this guy is not slowing down. I said, oh, and then I saw the sign. I said, okay, there is a rest area up here because I travel it all the time between exit, between mile markers 97, 98. Is that true? Yes? Yeah? Yes. And that's what you thought when you saw the rest, the mile mark, the rest area sign. You thought, oh, he's going to go to the rest area. Yeah, for sure. And it turns I, out you were pretty prescient. Prescient, you know, you you couldn't read the guy's mind, but boy, you were pretty accurate because that's what he did. Yes. And it made sense at that point. That's why you didn't call 911 again because all the guys correct. did not going to take care of it. That's correct. I know you made judgments at the time about what you thought was best for you at that time, right? Yes. And I assume you don't begrudge other drivers to make their own judgments about what was best for them, right? No. Okay. Can I have a second track? Certainly. 
And um, I just want to make sure that we heard it. I know it, it kind of passed by us quickly. You did try to call 911 at one point, right? Yes. And you didn't get through? Correct. Okay. And you did not try again? No, I didn't. I have nothing else, Sharon. Thank you. Can you redirect? <clears throat> yes, Sharon. Are you were driving a trailer yourself? I was pulling a trailer, yes. That's what I was pulling a trailer. <laughs> And Council, as you used your best judgment about speeding up, correct? Yes. And why did you want to speed up? Uh, just if a chunk or something came off the vehicle, or, so I didn't get hit, and just move on. And it was just instinct, I guess. There was a concern. Would that be fair? Yeah, it's leading. I'm sorry, did you have any concerns? Staying this to leading. Did you have any concerns? Uh, just that possibly something would come off and fly back. And that's why you sped up, is that true? Yes. The council said you used your best judgment when you were driving, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Did you have any equipment violations or equipment defects, I mean, on your truck? Judge, I'm, I'm objection and speculation relevant beyond the scope of the cross. And how would he possibly know unless someone actually looked at the... Well, if he knows, we'll take an answer. Okay. Oh, well, we'll let uh, I not knowingly did I have any equipment issues. You didn't have a. Uh, you were you were throwing sparks on your car. No, okay. not to my knowledge. And you said that you didn't see any other cars around, correct? Correct. What is traffic like that? What is traffic like on Northbound I seventy five in that area at that time of day? It's pretty light. It's very heavy southbound, but. It's light. I do. Re there was a car way up and out there, but it was in front of this vehicle. But other than that, other than that, I there was no other cars in there. Now, council, you've got a couple times, but you you made an attempt to call nine one one, correct? Yes. Okay. And when you you were unable to get through. Correct. And I believe you testified on cross that you you didn't try again after you saw this car get off into the rest stop. Correct. Correct. Why not? Uh, he was at the rest area, and I, I said previously, I, I assume he just wanted to get to the rest area to correct whatever was wrong with the, his vehicle or take care of the problem. Okay. Uh, did you have any other concerns once he was off the road? No. But you did feel concerned enough to call 911, is that fair? It's an objection, it's legal. Sustained. Okay. Nothing further, Your Honor. Anything further? Yeah, and I, I'm not trying to, to, to nitpick or quarrel, okay, Mr. Mr. Fletcher? Sure. I really just... Forget about arguable equipment violations, because you don't know what somebody, some police officer could look at your trailer and decide to do this or that or wait, who knows, right? Absolutely. Okay. But it's indisputable that at one point you were speeding. Indisputable. Right. And, and I'm not saying that, that you did, you just made a judgment at that time that that was what was best for you. Yes. You weren't being reckless in your mind, were you? No. Okay. Thank you. Anything further? Your witness. No, Your Honor. Uh, any questions from the jury? No hands are raised. May the witness be excused. Yes. May the witness be yes, excused. Yes, Your Honor. Honorable response. Yes, Your Honor. All right. So Thank you. you may step down your your response. Members of the jury, this is an appropriate time for the lunch hour. We're going to synchronize our times. We'll see you back here at 1.30 this afternoon. Prior to 1.30, return. Go directly in the jury room. Close the door behind you. During the lunch hour.